It is seven o'clock. We will call to order this May 8th, 2024 meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, if I could ask everybody to stand and we'll recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. If I could ask Doreen to call the roll. Christine Snow. Here. Michelle Stevenson. Here. David Bork. Here. Peter Freilinger. Here. Richard Silkman. Here. And Joe Doherty. Here. With that, we have a quorum tonight. Um, we were aware that, uh, that Kyle Noonan would be unable to attend, um, uh, but uh, just remind me, I've, it's been several months. Um, who will be all the voting members this evening? Um, you have enough voting members. No, no, just, I, I think we've got f um, uh, six people here. Yep. So who is the alternate tonight? The alternate would fall to Joe. To Joe, okay. Again, it's been several months. I'm sorry, Brian. <clears throat> And again, thank you to everyone. This is our first meeting since um, uh, March 13th, and uh, that was a brief meeting. So um, uh, welcome to today's regular meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals. We will now come to order. This is a public proceeding, and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has the right to hear everything that is being said and to view all the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson, me, if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. We work from a prepared agenda and we'll take up tonight's items in the following order. First, the approval of our minutes. Second, a six month extension from a prior appeal, number 2756, for Neil and Heather Jamison. We will then enter into the regular course of business for appeals number 2759, a miscellaneous appeal by Northwest Civil Solutions on behalf of April Bailey, DBA Bailey Seafood, and appeal number 2760 practical difficulty variance appeal by the design company on behalf of Sun Porch LLC. Um, at that point, we'll have comments and we'll look to adjourn. Um, the, uh, I'll remind everyone that this is a public hearing. The burden is on the, on the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria and provisions of the applicable appeal. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chairman will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. It's important to note that if the appeal or special exemption criteria have not been met, the board must deny the appeal or application. In many cases, the appellant or the landowner may have a personal problem which prompted the request for the variance. Please understand that this is not legally relevant for the appeal. Again, we're here, here to find findings of fact. Um, uh, no matter how sympathetic the board may be to the appellant situation. After we vote on the merits of the, each criterion, a motion may, may be made to approve the appeal, and if there is a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state conclusions of the law based on the findings of fact to support a decision on the motion. In most cases, the board will request that staff prepare a draft written decision based on the stated findings and conclusions, as well as uh, supporting materials in the record for approval at the next meeting. Uh, so with that, rather than going into extraneous detail on where we go from, there, from administratively from there, why don't we get right into this? Um, first, we have the approval of minutes for the March 13th um, meeting. Do we have uh, a motion? So, so moved. David, thank you. A second? Thank you, Christine. Any discussion? Any comments on the minutes? Seeing none, could I see a, a, a show of hands to approve? That is unanimous, uh, the minutes are approved. The next item is um, a request by uh, Neil and Heather Jamison from appeal number 2756, an appeal last November um, for a limited direction of, of yard size appeal. Um, the extension request is due to schedule, contractor scheduling issues. Is the applicant here or the appellant here? If not, that I, I don't think that's an issue. We've talked about this before. We've expected extensions <clears throat> to be requested and, um, going forward, given the, um, the, the the paucity of contractor availability, and particularly in the wake of the storms that we've seen in the last few months. So, um, do we have? Can I see a motion to approve? So moved. Thank you, David. 
Second? Christine, second. Um, are there any comments uh, for, on, on the motion? Seeing none, again, we have talked about this in the past. Could I see a, vo uh, a show of hands to approve the, the motion? Thank you. That, is, that approves. And um, uh, Brian, you'll take care of the paperwork and do all that. Great. So that gets us into our regular business, which is we'll start with appeal number 2759. Miscellaneous appeal by Northwest Civil Solutions on behalf of April Bailey D doing business as Bailey Seafood, 165 Pine Point Road. Uh, and we have a gentleman up at the podium already. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, good evening. Um, my name is Jeff Jones, uh, Jones and Warren in Scarborough, Maine here. Um, I'm sitting in for and handling this for Jim Fisher at Northeast Civil Solutions because he had a scheduling conflict tonight. So. Um, Jim has, uh, you know, did the application, and, and him and I have worked together in many, many cases, so I'm handling this tonight for the presentation on behalf of April Bailey and Bailey's Seafood Restaurant. So what's, um, April is here to answer any questions, my client, but t tonight is, is basically a, um, a miscellaneous appeal to resume a non-conforming use um, because more than a year had passed before um, Bailey's Seafood Restaurant was able to reopen after a catastrophic loss, uh, which was caused by a frozen pipe, interior pipe. So the facts really, basically this, this site has been used as a restaurant for over 70 years um, in various different names, as you can tell from the application. But um, it would, it, it's really been a restaurant before there was even zoning here in Scarborough. And um, it's been operating by the Baileys uh, for the last 25 years or so as Bailey's Seafood Restaurant. In Jim Fisher's application to the board, um, he enumerated many of the issues that basically happened beyond the control of our client, April Bailey, um, um, that really caused the restaurant to have to close down and not reopen for almost, almost two years now. But uh, first was the untimely and unexpected death of her father, April's father, in, in the fall of 2021. And unfortunately, three months later, in January of 22, is that's when the pipe burst, frozen pipe burst, and went unnoticed for five or six, fix, five or six days, uh, causing substantial interior uh, damage to the property. So, um, and then the last few months and year, it's really been the pandemic, the COVID pandemic, and the inability to line up contractors and to get electricians and um, flooring people and plumbers and HVAC and refrigeration. It's just been um, having to deal with an insurance company to adjust and three different uh, insurance adjusters. And then once you, you think you've made it past that, that problem, um, you've got four, a bunch more issues to come. So, you know, restaurants are a pretty complex and highly regulated industry and commercial enterprise. So it's just taken this long to really get back to where we're ready to now open the restaurant, reopen it, and resume the business. So I want to, um, we've laid out in the application, all, of course, the facts, but it's basically that um, it's just been impossible to really deal with um, not only the, the insurance company, which we had three different insurance adjusters who have been pointed to, the, to this file, and every time there's a new adjuster, it's, there's another delay, and that person has to get up to speed and find out what's going on in the file, and you start all over again. Um, but what's, what we're here tonight is it's really a three-step process that we're having to go now that we're ready to reopen. Is The first was the planning board advisory opinion, and we've already done that, and um, as probably is in your packet, but um, that was unanimous opinion, approving this project and to approving that this um, matter resume as a non-conforming use as a commercial restaurant. So the second step in this process is what we're here tonight is the zoning board, and that's a miscellaneous appeal in order to, uh, basically to resume, resume a non-conforming use. Uh, this is a residential zone along Pine Point Road, even though there's a lot of commercial establishments, um, but they are non-conforming uses, and uh, because we had to close down for more than a year, we're in front of you here tonight. And the last step in this process, which is slightly different than past projects sometimes, is we, we now have to go back to do a new site plan review. And that's back before the planning board. And at that point, um, we've already had meetings about that and uh, the, the town staff have been involved. 
That's, that's scheduled for May 20th, as, um, assuming we're successful tonight. And that's really where the board, the planning board's gonna get into the, the issues that uh, the neighbors and others might be interested in, which is the buffering, the lighting, the landscaping, all of those kind of, uh, the parking, all of those issues, uh, including um, um, runoff, stormwater runoff, all of those are, are fair game, are, are actually um, gonna be discussed and uh, gonna be an issue uh, before the planning board on the site plan review. So all those things are gonna be um, sort of fair game and, and we're expecting uh, that there's gonna be many conditions of approval that's gonna be coming out of that, uh, that process before the planning board. So I'll, I'll run through the, the law, as you, you know this law as well as anybody, having to deal with it all the time, but the Scarborough Zoning Ordinance, Section 3F, um, basically lays out the procedure, and that you must find that the resumption of the non-conforming use will not be substantially different than the prior use. And that's exactly what we're proposing today. We're, we're not expanding the, expanding the restaurant. We're not making it bigger, smaller, anything. We're just re trying to resume what, was, what it was like in 2021, 2022, up to the point that we had the catastrophic loss. And then we have to, the second step of this process is that the resumption of the use of the, as a restaurant will meet the standards for special exceptions. And if, if, if you allow me, I'll run through those for you again. Um, I'll paraphrase some of them rather than read them verbatim, if that's all right. Actually, we're gonna probably ask you to read those into the record in as you stated anyway, so um, okay. um, what I'd like to do is, I, I think we've had a chance to read those. We'll ask some questions first, and then we'll give you the opportunity to read those in, but we'll read, have them read as you've um, put them in the application, if that's okay. Um, okay. Yeah, it's just a, it's a, it's a, it's a matter of, of having you formally read them into the record for us to then uh, accept them as, as, as your, your, your statement. So. Okay, so do you want me to do that now, or are you waiting for late, later? No, we'll do that. Um, what I'd say is, do we have any general questions right now? I'm seeing none. In that case, I'd like to move directly to the, um, the, um, the application, the standards for this special exception. And if you, we can go through um, each one of those, and then you can read in those those responses. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, we can start with the proposal will not uh, create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal emissions to, or air or water or other aspects of its design or operation. And, and again, our response is that the that the restaurant is a, um, is on public water and sewer, and uh, there'll be no change in the use whatsoever. Gotcha. Um, just as a question on that one, given the catastrophic loss that occurred, were there any requirements to change the connection to either sewer mains or water mains or anything like that? Or no, it's all 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 the the damage is on the first and, and second floor. On the interior of the building, yes, essentially. yes, okay, yeah, it's all interior. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Yeah, again, we're not proposing any change of the use. There's been no expansion of the business. Uh, there's no change of the hours of operation proposed. And it's going to be the same traffic that existed 20, in 20, 21, 22, right up to the point that we had the loss. It's gotcha. just going to resume what, we, what was already there. And I'll just remind everyone, if you've got questions or comments on the board at this point, feel free to jump in. But otherwise, we'll continue to walk through these. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, excuse me, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Yeah, and again, because we, we're not expanding, we're making no changes, as we've been open to the public for the, for the last 25 years as Bailey Seafood Restaurant, and there's been absolutely no trouble with public safety or any problems with the police um, down in that, on that corner. Understood. D, the proposed use would not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Yeah, and we're not, our proposal, although damage was inside the building, we're not proposing to excavate any, any part of the land unless it's required by the planning board on May 20th. Um, and all repairs are really interior repairs, not exterior. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses of the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. 
Yeah, we're proposing no changes as to the size of the building, the intensity of the use, the hours of operation. Um, we're not adding any uh, additional seating. We're not doing any, anything like that. And uh, there's no change in proximity to other structures because we're not expanding towards any abutter or, any, or anyone in the neighborhood. And if you could confirm that the uh, um, property is not in a shoreland zone? That's correct. You have the sufficient right title and interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use? Yes, April, April Bailey, who's here tonight, she's the applicant and she's the owner that she received the property through, her, through the estate of her father. And she's been the manager of the restaurant while Stanley was still living and still operating the restaurant. So, um, and the, the restaurant will continue to be operated by her. Um, and like it has been for hopefully for the last 25 years. Okay. And the applicant has a technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. The, uh, we made no, um, there's no proposed changes that was gonna require any financial um, big commitment or uh, capital that beyond what insurance is, is covering. Um, like we're prepared to, to cover the, the fencing and the buffering and all the changes in that that may be required by the planning board when we get to that point in the site plan review. And the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operations. Yeah, and again, it's going to be the same operation. No, nope, no change. We're we're just re trying to resume. We're not trying to expand, enlarge, do anything. Just try to go back to where it's been for, for until we had the loss to in 2022. Um, so there'll be no increase of noise and no increase of hours of operation that's proposed. Got it. Thank you. Um, great. If you can stay up there for just one um, a moment or two more. Do, do any questions or comments or, or um, from the board members at this point? Mr. Chair, I have just one question. Sure. <clears throat> have you completed all of the work necessary now to? Open, assuming you get approvals, or is there a lot still that has to be done? We've we've completed ninety five percent or so, um, and um, there's there's things that we know that we have to do for on the site plan part of this. Um, but after discussion with with Brian, it's decided that we should wait until after the planning board before we keep going doing anything further. Um, uh, that's just. You know, we don't want to be seen like we're, we're doing, we're, we're anticipating and doing more in, anticip in anticipation of, oh, we're going we're gonna to get approved. So it's, it, we're trying to balance that. But 95%, if not more, of the interior stuff, is, it, we're, we're, we hope to open Memorial Day weekend. That's why we've really tried to truncate this as, as fast as possible. <clears throat> so you've made all of these investments on a good faith belief that we would accept the fact that you're just continuing to operate in the way you've always operated and the expectation would be that the appeal would be granted. Yeah, I, 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 you know, obviously ignorance of the law is no excuse. We've all heard that. But April Bailey did not know that, that, that if she didn't resume in one year that she would have to go through this process. It didn't, it only, she, if you saw in the application, she was actually going to the town and getting food handler licenses for 2022, 23. And of course the clerk's office isn't gonna mention that to them, to her, sure. but um, that's, that's our defense, to be honest with you. Well, that's a reasonable one. Yeah. I just wanted to comment that I'm glad you'll be going through the site plan review and that you're amenable to improvements to Absolutely. help the neighbors out. Absolutely. I think that's great, thank yes. you. And, and I'll remind us all that, that, that we're here to to, um, uh, to, to vet the um, special uh, um, the special exception um, criteria. There are elements that the planning board will deal with on the site plan that are outside the scope of our review, but uh, but but we're here for, for for just that. So appreciate the background on that. But just to remind everyone of, of that. Um, with that, I'll ask for if there's any public commentary at this point from members of the public. Um, yes, sir. Could you uh, go over there just so we can hear you? My name is Dan Lambert, and I live at 153 Old Blue Point Road, directly across the street from the restaurant. It's unsightly, and everything that she was told to do years ago, she has not done. She's refused to do those things, and, and it's just frustrating. 
We, we hear the tenants, we smell the tobacco smoke, we, we uh, um, it's ridiculous what, we, what we're seeing. We have uh, our garbage people picking up the dumpsters at, at six o'clock in the morning. We have bread deliveries at 6.30 in the morning. I've gone out there multiple times to ask them not to come. I was told to call the police. I'd have, and they, they don't come at, until after the uh, vendor's gone. And it's just ridiculous. It's, it's, it's frustrating. And as far as, as far as her following through and everything, I don't believe she's gonna. That's basically how I feel, and I've got a lot more to say, but it's just not right what I got to say. Good. Okay? Well, thank you for your- I just need support from you guys, that's all. Thank she's you for She's not gonna follow through. Thank you for your feedback. Um, and, 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 and sir, I'd, I'd, one thing I'd say is that there's two forms for this one. One is this one, the other is the planning board. Okay. And, and my, my sense is your, your, your issues are probably better addressed to the planning board. We have a limited scope for what we can find for findings of fact and law, but the planning board has more scope for putting um, uh, uh, requirements or for putting um, uh, 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 site plan re um, requirements than what we can do as a zoning board. So um, thank you for your comments. We hear you. Um, we may not be able to incorporate those into our findings here, but there is another forum, and I'd encourage you to make sure you make yourself available for the planning board on the right. 20th. So. I'll be there. Gotcha. Great. Thank you. Any other folks here in the room today? Um, okay, and uh, we had a number of uh, uh, public comments that were in, are incorporated in the record. Brian, anything else that's come up, or phone calls, or the like? Um, no, all of the pub uh, all of the uh, comments in favor are in your packets. Um, there was one that came in by email. Um, if you want, I can read that. Um, no, you don't have to, it's been incorporated. Yep. Yeah, it's in our packet, so the packets. that's fine. Okay. Um, with that, if there's no more further public comment, I will close the public comment portion of this and then um, invite discussion among the board before we go through one by one. Any general comments before we start? Dave? Just uh, to reiterate, um, uh, our scope uh, of action right now is uh, simply to approve a zoning uh, variance uh, miscellaneous appeal. Um, the planning board, as you correctly pointed out, Peter, will get into the nitty gritty nuts and bolts of all yeah. the conditions that will be laid upon this, and there will be an enforcement process that will be established once that happens. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and David, I'm glad you, 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 you emphasized that because um, a lot of what this is, involves is the resumption of a, of a practice which has been in place for quite some time. Um, the planning board has the remit to place new um, restrictions, new requirements, et cetera. We really don't. We don't have that. That's, that's not part of what we do as a, as a ZBA. Um, but uh, we definitely um, understand and have heard both here and have seen in comments some concerns that I'm sure will be highlighted up to the planning board and will be taken up in, on the May 20th meeting. So, um, uh, but uh, our legal role is what it is, so uh, we'll go through here. Any other comments from <laughs> Richard? Just have one qu question. I'm assuming that we grant the appeal. Is it time limited? I mean, if they don't do anything for a year, do they have to come back again, or is this a... Is this grant a forever they can now take to come back online? Do as, you know the answer to that question? As we've seen, because they didn't resume operations, they had to come back and, and, and reapply for it. So I just don't know whether that's like one year or two years, or if they miss one year, can they go the following year? Or I'm not sure how that works, Brian. And we're granting them a variance from the requirement that they could only take one year. And it strikes me that that means that we're granting the variance in perpetuity. It, it's really not but a variance that we're granting. We're, we're granting approval to resume a non-conforming use. It's not really a variance. Wrong word. Yeah. But is there a time period for which so that's So any valid? decision of the board is good for six months. Okay. That's with a one-time six-month extension. Okay. okay. Um, Just want to make sure that the their, applicant their knows that in case right. we run into some issues with contractors or... In, adjusters or anything like that. I know Memorial Day is what you're shooting for, and that's great, but. There was some discussion, just so the board is aware, there was some discussion um, during um, the um, pre, 
uh, planning board meeting, we meet with the applicants to discuss their application and any deficiencies and that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And, and it was discussed, and Jeff was part of that, um, that um, should the board, uh, planning board, put any conditions uh, that require site changes such as pavement removals, mm -hmm. uh, plantings, that kind of stuff, they may very well put a condition that it needs to be done before the next uh, season opens, before their food handler's license expires okay. for the next time. That way there, there is something to hold their feet to the fire. That food handler's license and liquor license won't be renewed mm -hmm. if those changes haven't been completed. And that's only because Memorial Day is rolling up, summer season's coming, it's a bad time to be tearing up pavement and doing sure. plantings when you're trying to deal with traffic that's coming in trying to get food. So we understand that, and there may be some conditions on placed on it, but there will be a time limit placed on everything, yes. Okay. Joe, did you have a... Okay, got it. Um, without further comment, then, um, why don't we go through the um, uh, special exemption requirements? Um, we won't... As we normally do this, I, know, I keep shuffling papers in the wrong order. I apologize, everyone. There we go. Um, why don't we start down, um, uh, 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 Christine, with A. Um, you can start with A. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. And the petitioner says that they're currently connected to public water and sewer. They don't discharge any surface water directly into a protected source. Looks good. Okay. Any comments or questions? Uh, if we, could I see a show of hands to agree that this has um, been met by the applicant? That is unanimous. We'll move on to B. Uh, Michelle. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Um, so this has not been expanded, this building, um, and to my knowledge, and the planning board will go through this, but the parking lot won't be changed in any way, so it should be typical of what they've been operating at. Um, so I see that they have met this, that they won't create any, anything other than what they've been doing um, traffic-wise. Great. Any other comments on that? No show of hands that this has been met? All in favor, all have agree. C, David. All right. Put the mic on. Uh, the proposed use will not uh, create public safety problems, <coughs> which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood, or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire and police protection than existing usage in the neighborhood. Uh, first, there's two parts that I'll address here. The first part is this is a resumption of an existing business. So there will be no difference at all in terms of its impact on the neighborhood. Second point I'll make, even though this is in, in R2 zone, residential zone, it, this business predates zoning. Right. And if you look up and down Pine Point Road, there are other businesses just like this. Mm -hmm. So there's really nothing that will be substantially different along Pine Point Road, which is a mixed use road, mm -hmm. granted, uh, than there currently is. Any other comments or questions? Got it. Do we agree that the applicant has met the conditions of this, of this item? Show of hands is unanimous, yes. The proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water, water supplies. The applicant has indicated that um, uh, there are no substantial changes uh, to um, uh, uh, runoff or, um, or water supplies, um, hookups or sewage. Um, and uh, based on the site plan that they presented, it doesn't appear there's any material change. So I would say the applicant has met this requirement. Any discussion? Seeing none, can I see a show of hands who concur? Thank you. Richard, E? Will be compatible with existing uses in the 
<clears throat> with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. I mean, this is similar to item C above, as David described. It's an existing use. We will continue the existing operations, so there'll be no impact relative to history in terms of uh, the neighborhood. So I think they've met this criteria. Okay. Any comments? Seeing none, show of hands to concur with the funding. Terrific. Um, Brian, we always ask you to handle this one for us, so um, it is not, in fact, in the Shoreline Zone. Uh, yes, I can verify it's not in the Shoreline Zone. Terrific. Then Joe will give you item G. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. And um, a deed has been filed, I assume, Brian, with us? There's a deed in the packet uh, yep. that conveyed the property to Stanley Bailey. I, I didn't see anything that, that noted or identified that it had been passed to April, but uh, I assume that is a document that we could be given at some point to prove that if we needed to. But. Okay. Then, then based on that, I, I find that the applicant has, has met this standard. <clears throat> Any discussion on that one? Seeing none, a show of hands to agree that this is finding great. Um, the, uh, Michelle, back to you. Or, yeah, Michelle, if you mix it up now, we just have a couple left. Sure. The applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Um, no changes are proposed, so um, they didn't, other than you know, them dealing with um, insurance and everything for um, financial ability purposes, um, but technical, uh, it's not really any changes, I guess. It's, gotcha. Sorry, that wasn't very eloquent, but. <laughs> okay. David, you have a comment? Yeah, just to answer that, uh, we don't know what the planning board will require. Uh, however, the applicant uh, certainly uh, has shown the financial ability to comply with standards. Um, so, uh, you know, I think whatever the planning board decides, they'll be right. able to comply. Gotcha. Any other comments? No, nope, seeing none, could I see a show of hands confirming that this is a valid, um, um, have, we've met the requirements. I'll take the last one. The proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to no generation of noise and hours operation. I think this actually um, directly um, uh, engages with the, um, the one public comment that we heard tonight. Um, which is that there have been some requirements in the past which haven't been addressed. Um, nevertheless, th that, uh, the enforcement of those prior requirements is beyond the scope of us as the ZBA. So I think we do need to find that, that this is compatible with existing uses, but I think, Brian, we would want to reflect to the planning committee that we have received, uh, or the planning board, that we have received public comment that, that indicates that there may be enforcement actions that should be considered in, in their site plan review. Um, and and, um, and we would encourage them to incorporate those in their considerations. Second. I also <laughs> second Third. that. Um, gotcha. I think they need to do what they say they're going to do and be good neighbors. Yep. Um, but again, that's not our our scope as a ZBA, but it's it's something to be considered. So on that one, though, I think we do need to find that, that this has been met. Um, so if I could see a show of hands on that. And that is unanimous. Okay. So... Um, we have gone through that. Thank you very much um, for the applicant. Thank you for the public. Um, we'll now take a motion to approve. Exactly. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> so moved. Uh, David, a motion to approve. Do you have a second? I'll second that. Uh, Shelly, thank you for a second. Any further discussion or comment from us as a board? If not, then I would ask um, uh, Doreen to call the roll. Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? Aye. David Bork? Yes. Peter Freilinger? Aye. And Richard Silkman? Yes. The vote is unanimous. Um, this is, the appeal is approved. Thank you very much, and thank you for your comments. Um, okay, that's that. Um, the next one, we will move to appeal number 2760. Practical Difficulty Variance Appeal by the Design Company, Inc., on behalf of Sun Porch, LLC, Molly Stone, and William Behrens. 
Barron's got it. Uh, 24 Ashton Street. So there we go. We have the design company. Yes, Walter Wilson from Design Company. Walter Wilson, thank you very much. Um, take us through. Well, I represent the owner of 24 Ashton Street, Sun Porch LLC, located in Higgins Beach. We are seeking a practical difficulty variance for the construction of a new residence and carriage house to replace the existing buildings located on the property. The requested variance is for relief from the required north side setback of eight feet to a proposed four foot setback as shown in the site plan. Um, as you know, the Board of Appeals may grant a variance from the dimensional standards when strict application of the provisions of the ordinance would create a practical difficulty as defined in the ordinance. And what I did next is I indicate our interpretation of what the practical difficulty is. It's on the listing, I think number eight on the, on the, on the conditions to meet. But I thought we should put that first and get that out of the way and discuss that. So, so the property currently is improved the main residential building and a separate carriage house located in the rear portion of the lot. The residence is located, located close to the right property line. The existing setback being one foot six on the north side of the back corner of the house and three foot off the side land at the front corner. The two structures were built in the year 1900, according to the town of Scarborough. To the south side of the resident, an existing paved driveway from the house to the property line is located. The sewer line serving the house and extending to the rear carriage house is also located in this driveway. The sewer line is very close to the house wall and is presum presumed to be located in ledge, as is evidence of ledge under the house and around the house. The town water line service is also located in the driveway. The existing house does not have a conventional foundation but is supported by a posting system. This is typical with a cottage style building of this period. The first floor is elevated approximately five feet above the driveway. To renovate this building and install a concrete foundation would be far more expensive for the owner and the building's uh, size and shape would not meet the needs of a 2024 structure. The owner desires, desires to build a new structure and carriage house that meets the Higgins Beach zoning district and the character code requirements of the area. They would also like the new home to be located where the existing building now stands in order to protect the driveway and sewer lines. The zoning for Higgins Beach per permits a two and a half story, 28 foot wide by 38 foot deep house. Um, and if you're familiar with the zone and character zones of Higgins Beach, it's different than the other zones where it's more particular as to size of buildings and so forth. Um, we are proposing a building that's 28 foot wide and 32 foot 8 inches in depth. The current building is 29 feet wide. The new house would be located four feet from the prop right property line. The new house would have a concrete foundation and the proposed house and carriage house will satisfy the Higgins Beach character, uh, character ordinance except for the north side setback dimension of eight feet required by the main house. The proposed location with a four foot setback reduces the existing encroachment on the property. The proposed location allows the south side of the new building to be located along the edge of the driveway. A significant economic injury to the applicant would be added to the construction costs if the proposed house was recited to meet the eight foot sideline setback. The relocation would mean the existing driveway and sewer line would need to be reconstructed. The driveway would be less in width and the entry from Ashton Street would need to be reconstructed also. The placement of the proposed house four feet from the south to the south would mean that the sewer line location would need to be redone from the carriage house to Ashton Street through the on-site ledge areas. <clears throat> this would be approximately 70 foot long and may need a new tie-in to Ashton Street, which is on the opposite side of the street. In order to maintain the driveway sewer line and locations to, and meet the eight foot setback, the proposed house would need to be reduced to 24 feet wide. However, the Higgins Beach zone states that a house 28 foot wide is permitted. Reducing a building width would result in a significant economic injury to the applicant that could be avoided by granting of the 
requested variance. Therefore, we contend that a practical difficulty exists because the existing driveway and sewer line locations and a significant economic injury would result to the applicant if a four-foot sideline setback variance was not provided. It should also be noted by the board that a roof bump up that could be identified as a dormer is required on the north side of the building to allow headroom for a stairway to the upper half story. The structural feature is designed so the stairway is able to comply with the dimensional requirements of the building code. The exterior wall is a vertical extension of the wall below it and is the width of the stairway. It does not act as a, like a room dormer but does provide headroom for the stairway. The applicant desires that the board approves this feature as part of the required four foot variance application. Uh, now before I introduce Paul Letty to address the, the, to the board and explain the economic injuries that the applicant could see if a variance is not granted, I would like to explain the considerations and restrictions and restraints that resulted in the application that is being presented tonight. First, the rear yard setback in the district is 30 feet. I propose it will be for a house that is about, is 32 foot 8 inches in depth and would have a rear yard setback of over 46 feet. This is to accommodate an existing rear yard corridor view from the neighbor's house located to the north of this project. The applicant does not want to block the neighbor's view. This consideration determined the depth of the, of the uh, proposed house to be 32 foot 8 inches. <clears throat> a, we could have gone 38 foot with the ordinance, but we want to keep this corridor view open. I actually did the design work on that abutting house, and we situated it so that the back of the house could have a view down through this corridor to the ocean. And uh, the owners do not want to block that view. Uh, the proposed house, <clears throat> proposed house is 28 feet wide and replaces the uh, current 29 foot structure. By placing the new house parallel and four foot from the uh, uh, side property line, the existing encroachment becomes less. This location allows the entrance to the driveway from Ashton Street to remain. Without the granting of a practical difficulty variance, a new sewer line would need to be installed and the driveway entrance from National Street would need to be uh, reconstructed. The third, uh, the front yard is elevated from the driveway surface and is separated by a retaining wall. A granting of the requi uh, requested variance would allow this feature to remain. The fi finished grading in the retaining wall would need to have some work done to it because of the uh, wider front porch and the location of the stairs. If a variance is not granted and the house was to have it to be eight feet from the sideline, the front yard would need to be, to be extended to the east, which would be part of the entrance re uh, reconstruction. The fourth thing I want to bring up is Brian Longstaff suggested that a building 24 feet by 38 foot <coughs> could be built to avoid a variance. The 38 foot depth would mean that the house would have to be set back further on the, into the rear yard setback and would nearly block all views from that corridor from the next door neighbor. So that's why we ended up with a house 32 foot eight inches. I submit that the 28 foot wide house that is proposed in the location proposed warrants a variance because one, it reduces the side yard encroachment from the existing one and a half feet to a four foot setback. The existing sewer line and driveway are a practical difficulty that restricts the proposed house from meeting the eight foot setback requirement. The need to reconstruct the driveway entrance and front yard would be avoided. The ordinance allows a 28 foot house to be located on the property. A strict application of dimensional standards would both preclude a use of the property that is permitted in the zone and would result in a significant economic injury to the applicant. So those are the reasons I have 
of why we have a practical difficulty. Um, the practical difficulty pretty much dictates where the house and the property should be, which is where the existing house is now. <coughs> and in doing so, we still reduce the encroachment that the existing house has on the side length. So at this time, I'll let Paul Letty come up and explain some of the economic before you do that, economic. Yeah, uh, before you do that, I'd like to have the uh, give the uh, um, board an opportunity to ask questions. So, Mr. Bork. <clears throat> yes, uh, you mentioned um, a 24 wide by 38 uh, structure, as was suggested for us to consider. Would you encroach on the rear setback? Well, yeah, because we're proposing a 32-foot front-to-back building. What is the rear setback, please? What's that? How, what, what would be the encroachment on the rear we setback? We would encroach into feet? the how rear setback feet, more. Yeah, how many feet? If we made it 38 feet. Yeah, but how, and by how much? Well, it would be another six feet, and that would pretty much block that corridor view that the okay, next-door neighbor has. Views are not uh, a criteria. Uh, for us to consider. All right, so I just want to make that clear. Although it's certainly nice to be neighborly and, you know, not block somebody's view, it's not something that we take into consideration. My only question, really, regarding the you know, extending the building back is how far into that setback would you be encroaching by making it... In the actual feet building long? setback, we wouldn't be encroaching into that at all. Okay, so that would not be an issue, but I thought I heard you say it would be an issue. If it were 38 feet, I think only as far feet. as the ordinances go, it wouldn't be an issue. No, it's one of the considerations on the project yeah. that we took in consideration right. when when locating the building. Okay, well, all right, I understand that, but again, it's not something that we don't consider views in making decisions. Although it's it's certainly nice and neighborly to do so, but yeah. that's really not something that we. It's not something that's part of how we make decisions. I do have a few other questions, though, if you don't mind. Uh, on the practical difficulty explain, you do say that you're presuming that um, there is ledge, okay, yes. where, on, uh, where you would have to extend the sewer line? Yes, there's a ledge, or, ledge in the rear of the property, under the building, and the, assumed. Well, you used the word presume. Assumed. So does that because mean that we, you've, you found it or not? Well, it's under the pavement, so we assume that the ledge is there because it's present on 80% of the property. Okay. All right. So you're, you're speculating it probably is because most of it is ledge. Would that be Assuming accurate? yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So it could be. Um, other question. Um, the bump up. Yes. Uh, for, for the, you know, resembling a dormer. Okay. Um, is, is there any other way to put a stairwell in you know, without having to do that? To get headroom on the, where, where the stairway is located, we need the bump up to get up through the... No, could the stairway... You, remember, you're building a new building, a new structure. Could the stairwell be located somewhere else in the house so that you wouldn't have that problem to resolve? It's possible that it could be, but it would mess up all the floor plans for three stories. Okay, so... From your perspective as an architect, you're saying that that's not advisable. Not advisable because it would be detrimental to the floor plans to do okay. that. All right. That's all I have. Thank you. Um, are there other questions? I've got a couple of comments I wanted to make. Um, first off, I, I want to critique the applicant and its representative. We didn't receive a lot of material. At the, for the timely um, receipt of, our, of the application. Um, specifically, the cost estimates for um, the, 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 the driveway, the um, uh, foundation scope for a new building or the existing house, and frankly, in, in terms of demonstrating practical economic difficulty, I still don't see real any, really any evidence. Um, I see some cost estimates, but I don't see a... a the the value de, um, difference and and frankly we're not here to help you maximize the value of the property we're here to 
approve variances that make sense with a reasonable um, lack of economic loss. We still don't have those materials here. And I understand there will be someone else coming up to talk about it, but the materials presented don't back it up. So you're going to have to have a very convincing rhetorical argument because your numbers are failing. Well, um, well, and, and then on that one, I, I, I say specifically, um, I don't see how a 24-foot home on Ashton Street in Higgins Beach, designed appropriately without requiring a variance, wouldn't provide a, an enormously attractive economic return to the applicant um, for, versus the continuing occupation of the existing house. Um, so we, we, we practical difficulty variances, again, are not designed to, uh, to, maximum, to allow you to maximize the economic value of a property. They're designed to allow you to use the property given the restrictions of the property um, and still have enjoy a commensurate return or a commensurate economic value. So I've heard what you've had to say, but I don't see, I don't, I don't see an argument here yet. Um, so I, I, I actually do. Uh, uh, this, this is our findings of facts. These aren't, we haven't got to them yet. We, we, we are going to get to them. I'm saying, and again, I know you're going to bring somebody else up. Um, I'm, I'm giving you a chance now to know that at least the chairman of this zoning board sees of a, an enormous paucity of evidence that would allow us to move forward. So um, with that in mind, if you'd like to bring up your next person, I'd be happy to hear, hear from you. Everybody gotcha. wants copies of this narrative. Is that no. something that you would want me to pass out right I now? I think we've got. No, yeah, I, I, I have a, a newer, a, a, well, a narrative that. If you have a new one, then yeah, yeah. please. Yeah. Well, technically, aren't we not supposed to? No, we can. Explain. Yeah, we can. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and, and, and we'll have it read in the record and all the rest. So yeah, we we, we yeah. can definitely do that. Yeah. yeah. So. Um, so this is basically, and, and pardon me, I'm gonna. That's okay. I totally want to. If you, if you skipped some sections that had a lot of ands and ums, that I would be great. I'll do my best. I'll do my very best. No worries. And, Thanks a lot. And if you, if you yeah. see me floundering, please stop it. You got it. Well, there's no pressure on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, Okay, uh, Paul Letty, Letty Build Design, uh, glasses. Uh, the applicant, Bill Behrens and Molly Stone, own a home on 24 Ashton Street in Scarborough. They reached out to my company, Letty Build Design, to renovate or reconstruct their home on Higgins Beach, which includes a main house, cottage, and a carriage house. As we began our budget analysis, it became evident that in order for us to comply with the current setback requirements, we would have to relocate the existing sewer line that serves both the carriage house and the main house. Upon further investigation, we realized that this would add considerable cost to the already high cost of construction. As we now need to remove the existing driveway and relocate the sewer line, at least eight to 10 feet away from where it is now. The lot has exposed ledge. We do not have an estimate to drill and blast this ledge as it may prove to be disruptive to the adjacent homes and add upwards of $50,000 to remove, but we do have an estimate from my excavating contractor to relocate the sewer line, not including blasting. The estimate includes opening up Ashton Street to install a, a new sewer connection as the existing sewer in the street runs downhill towards Bayview, and our new location would enter the city sewer line downhill of the current sewer connection. Knowing these steps would add thirty to $80,000 uh, to the project budget, we uh, explored renovating the existing cottage, but quickly determined that the additional cost to install a foundation under an existing cottage would add over $100,000 to the project, without even renovating the cottage 
and in my experience, to continue estimating the project as a renovation would add upwards of $200,000 in comparison to building a new home. In addition to the potential ledge removal for relocating the water line, I would have to reconfigure the driveway entrance from Ashton Street and reshape and repave the driveway. Uh, this result is an additional cost not yet provided. My advice to the owner was then to propose to reduce the existing width of the current cottage from 29 feet to the allowed 28 feet and to reposition the structure to be parallel to the property line, which would reposition the new structure an additional two and a half feet away from the line that it currently exists. This would allow us to construct a new code compliant, energy efficient home without relocating the existing sewer line, therefore eliminating the need to reconnect in the street and drill and blast. We discussed the idea of building a narrower and longer house to comply with the current setbacks, but we would then be interfering with the neighbor's view corridor, blocking the natural light and they that, that they currently uh, enjoy. Plus the design would make it seem now like we have two carriage homes and not a main house with a carriage house. As reluctant as we are to go through this variance process, and we are, we realize that this is why this option exists and our option, uh, I'm sorry, and our request fits the criteria of why a variance should ever be granted. Our hope is that the board will understand that our request is well thought out, has merit, and is precisely why this process is available. Our intent is to build a new attractive home that fits back on the site with the least amount of change and disruption to the character of the neighborhood. Thank you for your consideration. And I will now try to answer as best I can, uh, Peter, any of your concerns. With yeah, class. So we'll start David. with David here. Okay. Um, you, you refer to allow 28 feet. Uh, that's a Higgins Beach um, requirement, is that correct? Uh, character code allows 28 feet, yes. To code? To the current uh, character code. For Higgins code. Beach, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, is, is that not a maximum width? It is a maximum. So that doesn't have to go to the maximum. No, we could reduce it. To 24. Yes. But? Uh, well, I, I think when we get into the design and you look at a 24-foot wide building, uh, and then, it, it, you know, the square footage reduces, of course, and then it looks like we have two carriage houses on the property. Well, all right, so to the square footage comparison between 24 by 38 compared to what you're proposing, it's an insignificant difference. It's only like three square, uh, is, is that correct, Brian? How many square feet was that, the, the, the delta between the uh, proposed versus what uh, you, were, you were suggesting? We do have three stories, David, so whatever. Uh, so triple it. Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's so not it's about, insignificant. It's about yeah, 10 square feet opinion. total, about 10 square feet total. Uh, no, it's, no. It's about a 14% reduction in square footage. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so all, all I calculated three. was the 14%. 14 14 so Times three? No, no, no. It, it's so. He did the times. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, exactly. It's, okay, thank you. Okay, got it. All right, so. All right, I, I just wanted to. And, and you know, just make, make sure that uh, the way I understood what you were saying is sure. that you were allowed 28 feet. Now, but you're not because, you know, you know, the, because of the well, we're 29 feet currently. Yeah, and we could re renovate the house. Yeah, uh, in its in its current. You could, but yeah. to replace the house, right? You have to come before us to get a, a variance. Right. And we have to consider setbacks. Correct. Okay. Which what what you're proposing is doesn't comply with the setback requirement. It doesn't, it, we're, not a lot, we're not able to comply with the setback requirement because there is a condition on, on the site, up and down the street, because I've built uh, on that street before, and we have, uh, you know, poured up against ledge, not needing to uh, uh, remove ledge for the sewer, but needing to pin to ledge. Um, I, I know you asked Walter, I think Peter, you asked Walter uh, that we we're proposing or supposing there's ledge. Y you can actually stand on the edge of the pavement where there's ledge mm -hmm. and, and the pavement is broken up around that piece of ledge and then you could just go underneath the underpinnings of the house and see ledge everywhere. 
So we, we know that where the uh, existing sewer line is, which is right up against the edge of the house, would have to move over uh, minimum, excuse me, minimum of eight feet, probably 10 feet. So now we're right in the middle of the driveway. So in order to meet the code requirements and, and even design a 24 foot, would, 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 would have us get into blasting and removing ledge. Okay, which circles back to where you started, which is the cost. Right. Okay, so that's what is being, that, that's what's being identified right. as the hardship. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm here to talk to you as a builder from cost, not necessarily uh, design, but, but um, yeah, we, we started, you know, I, I walked through it with my, I brought my son Ryan here with me. He's, you know, uh, part of the operation with Letty Build Design. We've walked over it with uh, Mayetta Excavating. Um, with, our, with our experience building down there, uh, it's it's going to be very very difficult to uh, move that house over into the existing driveway where there's ledge everywhere. It, it's going to it's going to force us to remove ledge, and of course get into repaving the driveway, re, re uh, configuring the entrance from Ashton Street, and then of course we have to we have to uh, reconnect the sewer. Uh, in the street, on the other side of the street, because the sewer, as you know, runs from the top of the street down towards Bayview. And you know the old saying, sewage runs downhill, something like that. And um, Got it. W we would need to then, you know, open up the street to relocate and rehook up the sewer, uh, mm -hmm. you know, eight or 10 feet away. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Lake, for explaining all that. Um, other so Christine. your ledge is <laughs> sorry, Christine. Your ledge issue, it's not going to be an issue putting in a foundation. It's not an issue for the foundation because, as I said, we we've done it before, right down the street, about four houses down. When we get to the ledge, I can clean it all off and I can pin my footings and foundation to the ledge. It, it's okay. We don't expect to get headroom. You know we. Yeah, we can pin to the ledge for the foundation, but in order for us to get water and sewer, of course, we have to get at least five feet down, and, and that's a whole other smoke. Is there something Michelle. in particular that you found that was wrong with or wrong with the current structure other than ledge? Like, does it have mold? Is it, is it deteriorating in some way? It's deteriorating in every way, uh, Shelly. Sorry. It, it's, uh, yeah, it, it's, um, it's in desperate need of, of at least a renovation. And I mean, so the windows are, you know, old. The, the, the boards are rotting. The, the floor systems are subpar. They're like some two-by-sixes. In some places, two-by-fours. It's just... Pictures would have been nice of this property to show uh, that okay. just for future um, understood future yeah, we, uh, yeah no I, I can understand that uh, we, because, because it's helping us we need to understand you know yeah it's why a you're doing this what you're, um, cottage that, that was would built. be nice to know too yeah, yeah. It's a we don't cottage. drive by any of these places we don't know yeah. where we can't understand so that. like yeah, we I don't apologize. we're not familiar you have to give us that information yeah exactly so we're, i'm trying to figure out why you know could they could you do like a simple renovation but it sounds yeah. like it, it's currently not is, livable in the in the winter okay time. that is a great word to use too for us yeah thank you and, and, and paul and that's actually and Paul, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tongue lashing here. Um, we've seen you before here before. You've done great work, and, and we 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 know what your what your construction quality is. The quality of the application just doesn't reflect what I would have expected to come from 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 your organization. Uh, we didn't didn't have the, uh, the 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 data on the existing house to understand what that looks like. Um, I've got some more concerns about sort of the design features of this, um, but. And the fact that we got a lot of this information today or within the last five or six business days um, puts us as a zoning board in a difficult position. And a lot of this, this really um, 
could be a lot easier. And, and no, I know, given the quality of your, you, you'll, you'll come to us in the future on these sorts of things. Sure. And you've done other work in Higgins Beach, so and Higgins Beach always seems to come before us. So um, uh, I, I just, I, I'm, I, we're disappointed as a board um, at the at the timing and the quality of the submission on this one. So well, now we will find you, facts and the rest based on what we've got sure. and what we've heard. Um, but uh, but it's harder for us to find facts um, that that weigh in favor of an applicant when we don't have them available. Understood. And I apologize for not making this uh, available. I know Walter made the application. Um, there might have been a little bit of um, miscommunication along the way, like what was necessary. I think Walter was pretty confident that this part of the presentation would was better served in person at the meeting. And uh, it, subsequently, I, I spoke to Brian a week or two ago, and, and he said, ah, that might have been best included in. So we, we, we missed that opportunity, and I apologize. Yeah. So I've got a couple other questions. First off, if I do the math, um, and you run the house back 38 feet instead of the 32 eight that you've got in the, in the diagram, and then reduce it to 24, you actually have equivalent plus or minus zero f um, of square footage difference. That's correct. Um, and as I understand it, because again, you can pin a foundation to the, 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 the ledge, there's really not, I want to say material, you'd have to do the rest of it and all the rest, but the cost differential of ex going 24 by 38 versus 28 by 32.8 um, I don't think would be material in terms of that. There'd be nope. a there'd be a redesign, et cetera. But I understand there'd be some cost. Sure. But um, and 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 so the only thing that I find that's impeding that from being a better decision here is the view, um, and and the the and that the, and, the view is one thing. The view and the light for for the next door neighbor. But um, and, we're we're kind of on we're, we're trying to operate under this character code, which has like a main cottage and then a carriage house. Mm -hmm. And from the street, we're looking at now, it, we would be looking at what I would think is two carriage houses. And, and it would not, if you drive up and down the street, you drive all around the neighborhood, that's not really the character of the neighborhood. And I don't think it's the intention of the character code. So this is why we're concerned that if we build the main house the same size as, let's say, the carriage house, that we look like we have two carriage houses on the property and not the not the uh, traditional cottage with the carriage house. Though you could build the carriage house smaller if you don't want it to appear that way. Just Correct. adding well, that. Well, now in. we're just asked to build everything smaller. Well, and, well or, or, or or we're not actually because we don't we're, have to build we're, the carriage we're, house smaller. We're, we're keeping our, our yeah. we're, we, um, we, there might be a footprint adjustment and, and appreciate sure, that, and that sure. would be a different variance request. But um, but we're not necessarily saying everything smaller. And and the other thing is, with with due respect, Paul, you're pro you're a great des you, you've designed some great properties. Thank you. Um, I, and and I would I, I would. Um, I would be surprised that you would uh, uh, not take up the challenge of designing the problem. Well, we, we, uh, I'm a, sure a we can meet that challenge. It's just, you know, we, we do like the, the big uh, sure. front, traditional front porch entrance that's right now, I think there's, if you drive by, which I understand mm -hmm. that, you know, pictures would have been helpful. Yeah. I think there's like 10 rocking chairs on the front porch. Sure. Uh, you know, it's a place where the neighbors, as they walk up and down, stop, uh, you know, come onto the lawn, sit on the big front steps. We're trying to keep that traditional cottage look. And uh, yeah, we could, I mean, we could design a really cool modern house there. If I had my druthers, I might <laughs> want to do that. But that's, that wouldn't fit into the character code. No, so. no. But if I think about Higgins Beach and what the character code has meant to preserve, it's not only this, it's also the, the, the more narrow houses, the, the more, the, yeah. the, 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 the um, same era. Tall, thin houses. Taller, yeah. thin houses, yeah. exactly. Right. So it, it's, it's that, that design issue is not a driven but it's forced upon you by the, the Higgins Beach design code. So you've got the view thing. Right. We, we are not really able to take that into account. Um, and, um, and again, I'm, 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 I'm not seeing the economic Mr. Chair, I, I want to stop you on the, the issue about the, you know, the view shed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It strikes me that we are able to take that into account. I mean, I believe our second criteria <clears throat> is that we don't influence the market value of abutting properties. Sure. And so if, if... If we feel that it, that's the case, yeah, a fair point. But, but, but yeah. it's not a question of whether I feel it or not. It's a question of whether we can take the effect on abutting properties into consideration. And I think we have to take the effect of abutting properties into consideration under the 
criteria. I think that we have to do that under evidence supplied by the applicant. So we don't, other than a statement that it likely would. Well, we I, don't, I mean, you know, that's where all we're getting is statements that they likely would or that it's going to yeah. cost this amount. I mean, that, what else? But, we're not doing independent evaluation. No, no, we don't. The record but is we, what we, the applicant gives us. We've often seen from other applicants, though, an estimate of the impact of the value on, other, on, on surrounding homes. And we've seen surrounding homeowners come through and say, don't do this because it will affect my property value, or you can do this because it won't but affect my property value. We would never expect a, a homeowner to come in and say to the hearing because they've already made the adjustment not to affect them. If they had made the adjustment and made it 38 feet deep, perhaps that owner would be in front of us saying, don't let them build it. It's going to block my view. But again, we so don't have kind of, You can't expect them to but provide Richard, us information we, we, about the counter plus. We right? don't have just, evidence just on to either add side. to this conversation, guys, we, we do know the neighbor very well, Mark, and he has been a part of this process and is in, in consideration of this project process and what we're proposing, he's on board with it. I, uh, we, we never proposed to him. Yeah. Oh, he did. Okay, so did. We, we never proposed him that hey, we we have this, no. you know, this is what we'd like to do so that we can preserve your light into your house. And yeah. as Walter said, he he designed that house right next door. Uh, so, you know, we're we're we are, yes, I know that it's not a big consideration to be like a good neighbor, but it, it's kind of hard for us not to just be that way anyway. I, I mean, I, well, I think. Um, First of all, I'll, I'll put a cap on my comments at this point. Um, Joe, do you do you want to? Sure. Just uh, we do have a letter mm -hmm. from Mark uh, Westervelt, next yes, to Mark, yeah. whose view, if based on what you're saying, would be affected. Yeah, you can see it on the site plan, but yes. So, would Mark write this letter if it were 38 feet deep? We I don't know. We don't know. Exactly. We, we, don't know. we don't know. And and to what degree is the view affected? A picture from the backyard For looking sure. out across and saying he loses or she loses. He'd be all. looking at our building. Right. I mean, yeah. so in, in you know, just a, a straightforward reading of, you know, I, I've lost it, the, the criteria. But well, we don't have any of that evidence of okay. any pictures. I, I, yeah. under, 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 understood. understood. Um, but the Thank straightforward you. reading of the criteria says of value like. the property as well. Yeah. Peter? Yeah. So are, are we looking at an undeveloped petition here and it should be tabled and maybe they come back? Brian, do you have any suggestions here? I would never weigh in on that. That's your decision. That's right. yeah. Yeah. Yes, David. Great. Okay, so uh, regarding assessed values, um, I'm on the board of assessment review, and uh, I work with Nick Cloutier carefully on this. Mm -hmm. I know we're going through a reval right now, but uh, it seems to me that assessed values are based on square footage primarily, not on the width of the the front of the property. And as I look at <clears throat> your proposal here, uh, this you know calls for. Uh, a 28 foot frontage, mm -hmm. okay? And compare that to a 24 foot, all right? That's a reduction of four feet. To me, that would be like one rocking chair. So it's no big deal, okay? And by looking at the, you know, going to 24, extending it to 38, that's practically identical square footage. There's no argument there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. The, so the, uh, the, the, the so for the realization of, the, of that is that we're blocking. We're, we're no, I understand. And I realize that's not part and of it. I, I understand that. that that you know you've gone this far. Yeah. Involve the neighbor. The right thing to do. Okay. Yeah. But we've got to look at it in terms of Understood. the law. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> you know sometimes we have to make decisions that are difficult. Um, but you know right now I, I'm looking at this and I'm saying that making the changes that would be an alternative. Mm -hmm. Without requiring a zoning, uh, a, a setback variance, okay, would actually uh, wouldn't have any material effect on the valuation of the property. Mr. Chair, yeah. <clears throat> actually, let me just say, David, are you good? Okay, got it. Sorry. 
I mean, it, I wasn't sure that was <clears throat> the width of the porch is one thing, and you're right, it's one rocking chair. Now we go in the front door, and we go up to the second floor, and we have two bedrooms side by side. If we take four feet away from those bedrooms, they are no longer functional bedrooms. That's a hallway. That's a hallway. That's and a hallway so, that serves those. So yeah. It, so now, now we're in a, on the second floor. We've lost a bedroom, and with the other bedroom was a little bigger, but we've lost it. And, we, and the size of the bathroom is four feet deep or less, and so now we've lost a shower. So yes, the front porch is a rocking chair, but inside the building, losing four feet is significant in terms of how you design the inside of a building. Well, Richard, I think you got to remember, though, what we're saying is we could maintain square footage by reducing by four feet and extending back by almost six feet. That doesn't get you anything, though, in terms of the width. No, I, I, I know, but it but, but, gives you but a different... Whether it, you can or you can't, I mean, that's an architectural decision, and they could design something to be that size. However, I think it's important to recognize that when you do that, you've changed the character of the inside of the building significantly. My house... I mean, I know you can do this. My house is 20 feet wide, right? What that means is it can only be one room deep. I can't have two rooms deep. If I had 28 feet, I could have two rooms deep, and it would change the entire layout of the house. Now, and that has significant economic value in terms of how you end up designing and what you're able to accomplish. So what we're really weighing here, it seems to me, is... We've accepted the fact that we're not going to renovate the existing house. That's a $100,000 foundation plus the renovation costs that they've mentioned to us. So that's not an option. Tear it down. Now the question is, do we tear it down and do we build a house that's 24 feet wide or 28 feet wide? If we do the 28 feet wide, we can build a standard kind of a house that has parallel side-by-side -side bedrooms, side-by-side -side baths, closets and kitchens and so forth in the house. If we go to 24 feet, we're limited in terms of our ability to do that, and the interior design suffers. I think now, the exterior the design suffers too. Well, Richard, now, that's another issue. So the question here is, is that enough to create a practical difficulty? Given the fact that we are going from a one-foot side setback to a four-foot side setback, so we're actually enhancing the setback, is it worth that four feet to make that kind of a trade-off inside? And ultimately, that's what we're all going to have to decide. I think we have enough information to make the decision. I don't think we need to table this. I think we can vote on it yeah, actually, that, that's, and just move it along I, and decide how we're going to proceed. Agreed. I, I think we're, we're probably seeing how our views are evolving here. But I think, Richard, your point is probably the, the, the pertinent one. Do we see a need to table and look for a more developed application, or do we have enough to decide. So let me, um, can I ask that informally or do I need to vote on that? Or if there's no motion to table, do I need to not? Okay. If nobody's made a motion. So um, one second on that one, because um, we'll get to public comment in just a moment. And you guys will be public, you guys are the applicants, though, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, then your public comment, hold on one second, then I'd like to get the applicants first, and we'll have the applicants finish that. Then I'd like a brief discussion to see if there's a tabling motion or none. And then if there's none, we'll go to the public comment, and if that's okay? Terrific. Okay, so if I could ask the applicants, and again, stand at the, uh, the podium there so that you can be heard. Um, Mr. Chair, I just want to remind you, you haven't gone no through the findings of fact. We're not yet ready to do that yet. But you're, you're going to public comment before you've read the response? No, I'm not. I'm going to the, to the, the applicants. Are, oh, they're so going to prove. Okay, yes, exactly. I see what you're doing. Okay. Yeah. Hi, good evening. My name is Bill Behrens. My wife, Molly Stone, is here. Uh, Sun Porch LLC is a two-person partnership that we created in order to own this property to keep the finances identifiable. Uh, we still have the option to renovate the building. It's 29 feet wide. It's one foot from the, from the sideline. It would cost us more money, but we still have that option. That can't, that can't be taken away from us, in a sense. Um, if we can build new, our intention is to put the electrical. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Higgins Beach, but it's a mare's nest of overhead wires. We'd like to 
put all of the electrical service to these two houses underground, and we'd like to provide to our downhill neighbors, not our uphill neighbors, the um, provide them the underground electric service so they also don't have wires hanging across the street. The poles are on the opposite side of the street and all the wires hang across. Uh, so we'd, we'd like to do that under a new construction scenario. It cleans up the street, it improves the neighborhood. Um, and we'd like to build a new house that maintains the character of the, of the district. Um, but is a building that will last and, and be energy efficient and dependable and serviceable and of high economic value for the next 100 years. But we can renovate the existing cottage and we can maintain our proximity to the side, set, set, uh, to the side setback. Uh, if you walk along Ashton Street in that, in that neighborhood, you'll find all the houses are crowded against their right sidelines, including the neighbor's house, Mark's house, which was built only in 2015. That's three feet from his north property line. So the rhythm of the street is already with the houses to the north side and the driveways to the south side. We'd, we'd kind of like to keep that rhythm of the street going. We don't want to slide into the driveway incur the ledge and all the other issues that, that Paul has identified. Uh, but we also like the backyard of the property. This, this is one of those properties that has a reasonable backyard on it. That's what creates the viewscape for Mark's house, is that he can look down the backyards down to the ocean. And so we have separation between the two cottages. A lot of them are crowded right up tight to each other. This property happens to be nicely separated. If we renovate the existing buildings, we can maintain that. The, the back carriage house is less than one foot from the lot lines, both sides. The setback on side and rear on a carriage house is three feet. If we are able to build new, we will move it away from the lines by roughly two feet, which reduces our yard size, but doesn't really have a, doesn't create a hardship on anybody else. Um, it's really the main house that's the issue. And the main house in terms of economic value, I think is of higher value to us as property owners, therefore higher value to the town as, as a piece of property in the town. Um, if it's, as uh, Mr. Silkman said, Dr. Silkman said, excuse me, uh, is a standard house, and not, not a squeezed house, but a standard house. Um, this, this is the Spurwink Cottage. It's been there since at least 1910, possibly 1900. Uh, it has had a, a lot of rocking chairs across the front porch for generations. Um, and we would like to maintain that nice wide front porch uh, to maintain the character of the neighborhood. We can do that simply by renovating the existing, leave it one foot six inches from the property line, uh, maintain our backyard, maintain Mark's viewscape, we can do that. Um, yes, it's more expensive to us, but uh, honestly, I think it would be of higher value than building the 24 foot wide house. I have a comment yeah. and a question. One, I do really like that you guys took into consideration your neighbor because I think that's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but two, my question was, um, if you're going to bury your lines and there's all this ledge, I don't know anything about buried lines. And that might be, I, this is the first I've heard about the buried lines. How, why can't you do anything with the sewer yeah, stuff? Sure, go ahead. I just don't know. I need you to educate Understood. me on it. So, so water and sewer have to go deeper than uh, power in a conduit. Very simple answer. But it's a good, it's a good question. And, and they're not also going across the lot. They're going right to the fronts of each lot. So. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. Babers. Just a follow-up here. Uh, so you, you said that... Um, you could 
keep the existing property and renovate it. You'd be perfectly happy with that. And at the same time, you said that it would be cheaper to you know, proceed with uh, what is being proposed by the, by the architect and the contractor. Uh, you could do it either way, okay? The question before the board was really, do you want to proceed or not? You know, so we were asking your opinion as to, do you want to go forward with this request or do you want to say, no, let's just table it, whatever. Um, so do you have an opinion on that that you'd like to express or would you like to just pass it's on? It's a great that? question. Um, I don't understand the process well enough to give a good answer. Okay, thank you. That's a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Could I say one thing to clarify something which I think is important? And that is about a practical difficulty. There's two things, basically. One is that without the variance, you can't, you can't uh, uh, use the property. And the other one is it causes excessive cost to the injury to the applicant. Now, if we didn't have what I call the practical difficulty already in the ground and existing there, which causes us to put the house to, to a location it's in now, if we didn't have that in the ground, we could take a 20 foot eight, 28 foot wide house and move it to the center of the lot. That would be the use that we'd be allowed to do. But because we have a practical difficulty, with an excessive extra cost to work around, the same 28-foot house we want to put where we want to put it. So the practical difficulty expense is avoided by leaving the existing conditions on the property where they are and build the new house. And the new house will have more of a setback than the existing house. So. With the practical difficulty, we can build a 28-foot house without the practical difficulty in place. We can build a 28-foot house on that lot. But with it, you're trying to say, we have to build a smaller house because we have a practical difficulty. And I'm saying that the reasons for variances are not put there never to use, they're to use when the, when the occasions arise where, in this case, the practical difficulty causes the use of an existing, of a, of a new house which meets the width that can be built at Higgins Beach to be made smaller. That even enhances the practical difficulty because now you're penalizing the house size on the fact that the practical difficulty is there. And the practical difficulty variance is supposed to relieve the applicant of excessive cost in building the house on the property. Are we done? Yes, I am. Okay, then uh, let's move to the reading the finding conditions. Yeah, sure. Okay, Mr. Williams. Uh, Besides practical difficulty, uh, you're I'd just like to just ask one particular question. Um, is there anything unique about the, this particular lot uh, compared to all the other lots uh, in the neighborhood? It's the actual boundary lines, no, that's not there's one. not much difference. But no. what, it is, what it does, it has infrastructure on the property that's existing and, and, and limits what we can do as far as the location of the lot unless we go to a, a very additional expense to get around the existing conditions. Okay. And that in itself is a practical so difficulty. So indirectly, you know, it does have bearing on practical difficulty. The fact that you have existing infrastructure underground 
you know, the, the sewer line specifically, um, which would cost a lot of money to, to relocate. And, the, and of course, to repave the driveway. Because that's, that's part of that. That makes, that makes this situation, you know, which is, you know, is unique, is something that's unique to this particular lot because of what's existing there right now. Is that true? Yes, thank you. That's all I have. Okay. That's a good segue into number one. Um, the need for variances due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions of the neighborhood. The proposed house to be 28 feet wide, 32 or 8 inches deep, which is within the size permitted to Higgins Beach zoning. This building is to be located in the area of the existing building. The location results in a need of a four foot side yard variance to the north side line because of the practical difficulty as explained above. Okay. Number two, the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of the abutting properties. The proposed construction of the main house and the new carriage house are designed to meet the requirements of Higgins, Higgins Beach Character Ordinance and therefore will not result in an unreasonably detrimental effect on the use of market value of abutting properties. Number three, the practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. The location of the existing house, carriage house, driveway, and sewer line was done prior to the adoption of the zoning ordinances. The ordinances are the reason that a practical difficulty now exists. Number four, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. The granting of a requested four-foot side line variance request would avoid the practical difficulty as defined above. This would allow the applicant a use of the property which is permitted in the zone and would not result in a significant ec economic injury to the owner. There is no other feasible alternative for reasons stated above. Number five, the granting of variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. Proposed side yard setback on the right north or the north side of the property is proposed to be four feet. The existing building is set back one foot six inches to three feet from the same property line. The proposed setback will reduce the current encro encroachment. Many of the homes located in the section of Ashton Street are located very close to the property sidelines uh, of their properties. Number six, the granting of a variance will not have an unnecessarily, excuse me, an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. No. The property is not located in whole or in part within a shoreland area as defined in 38 MS MRSA 435 or a flood hazard zone as defined in the Town of Scarborough Flood Plain Management. No. And gotcha. Um, there is the eighth item, which I believe if you've got a long narrative here, rather than asking to read that entire narrative, do you mind if we just have that included as your response to number eight? Yeah, that's the practical difficulty yeah, explanation that I referred to that's when right. I started. Yeah. Don't want to make you read that paragraph. Same after. thing. Okay, gotcha. We'll accept that as a response to number eight. So thank you very much. Yeah. I, w I will say one more thing about the location proposed. If you look at the house to the left or the towards the ocean side, that house is right up on the property line. Okay? And on the house to the north, Mark's house, he's right, I think he's two and a half feet from his property line when I designed that house. Okay. Yeah, he looks further than that, but if, if only we had the photos. Um, he's talking about the, uh, the other property. Sorry. Yeah, that's what I mean. If we, if we had that, that'd be great. Now, um, now, I've been before this board about 85 times, and a lot of them at Higgins Beach. And, and of course, the makeup of the board changes. But in the past, when I came in for practical difficulty, it was done the way I presented it now, by bringing with a narrative of what was to be asked, and we brought in all the data figures when it came to the board. And that's how I've always done it in the past. Sir, I appreciate that, and, and, I, and, and I understand um, that being said, the board is as the board is constituted. We've all received training from the MMA and how to consider practical difficulty variances. Um, 
it is our decision. We appreciate your responses. Thanks very much. I'd like to now open this to public comment. We have somebody who's been waiting here for a while. Um, so uh, if we could. Chair, can he pass out those pictures? Um, and, that, and that's copies for everybody. All right. But in the future, I don't think, I yeah. think that's a no, but in the future, that's very helpful because we don't go to these sites. We need to see that. Yeah. And, and in fact, we, we're not supposed to go to these sites. We need to have the evidence presented so that anybody who comes to a meeting can see it. So I really got, to, especially for photographic evidence, we can't throw it up there. Yeah. We, we can read things, but we can't. I, I really can't. I'm sorry. Could right. you state your name and uh, your address? And uh, thank yes. you very much. Thank you for your patience. All, all is well. I have given testimony many times. Um, my name is Steffi Cox. I'm here representing my family. Um, we live, we are the uh, William W. Cox Revocable Trust on the town records. We are the abutter at 22 Ashton Street and 22A is our little Sea Rose Cottage. Our cottages are ancient also. The Sea Rose arrived at its current location on a bunch of logs from somewhere by Houghton Street. My grandpa and his buddies smoked cigars and camped up at, uh, on the cliffs, uh, past Cliff Street up there. We've been on the beach a very long time and we've seen some of the fine work um, we saw some of your work as well. I think you did three morning street where the height had to be adjusted. Um, I believe you did. Um, but much of the work being done is, is great. Um, and we like having new neighbors. We miss the cousins who were at 24. They were family friends. Um, we grew up with them. Anybody who knew Bill Cousins? His voice was like thunder coming off the porch, talking to people in the rocking chairs. Um, there, there are a lot of families uh, who stay in our cottages as visitors. They also have been on the beach for generations. They have cousins in other houses. And we appreciate that Bill and Molly have continued to rent the small back cottage the starfish. There aren't many rentals anymore. When you invest quite a lot in a property, you tend not to rent it. And so one of the values our family cherishes is the ability to welcome people, that they are planning uh, not to consolidate the footprint into a ginormous something, but allowing for um, a second cottage. Uh, that sounds good. We just found out about there. We suspected there might be something afoot last summer when the surveyors came out and put the pins down. Um, and my dad went out and talked to Bill. Um, I can't remember, Molly, if you were there at the time. But dad, my dad, Bill, and talked to, to Bill Barons about where the ledge line runs. It runs diagonally under our house right to the cliffs. Um, so they probably are on ledge, but I'm not a geologist. Dad knows a lot, and if you want to, you know, get a tour, come and talk to him. Um, and one of our concerns is just to remind the board that um, through a sort of a wink and a nudge and a handshake, some of the driveway is on our property. We don't have too much of an issue with that, but we are concerned about... Uh, only hearing about this, I want to thank the town. If we hadn't received a postcard, we would not have known. You may have talked to Mark and his family, but you did not talk to us about your plans. So we have we are only learning what they are t uh, from yesterday afternoon, and the idea to bury the lines for electric is new to us. So we don't have really an opinion either way because not all of my family has had a chance to understand what your plans are. Um, but so with that, I want to thank the, the board and also Brian Longstaff for taking my call to help me understand your procedures. When I was chair of the Conservation Commission, our procedures were different and it was a thousand years ago, so it's good to be caught up on, on how things work here. And I thank you for uh, taking my comments. As I said, you know, great neighbors, um, but we're, we're, we're catching up on what the plans are. Thank you. Thanks. We appreciate that.
Um, are there any other public comments in the audience today? Seeing none, I will, or actually, um, any other comments we've received after the, the materials deadline, Brian? Just the uh, email from uh, Mr. Westervelt. Gotcha. Uh, okay. It's pretty brief. Got we, yeah, we saw that one, and that's in the material packet. So, Okay, with that, I will close public comment. And um, first ask for um, general comments from the board, and then we'll go through our findings of fact. Or do we want to go straight to the findings of fact? Joe. I'll start this off. When I received the, the package, the submission, the original submission, and I, I felt in some of the comments we've heard earlier that it, it was lacking in some detail. Um, and that troubled me. Um, that being said, I know that the challenges of some of the smaller lots in these these beach communities and and the challenge of refinishing or rebuilding a home um but then when we arrived tonight of course additional documentation came to our attention and and also i mean lots of information and while while tonight i'm not a voting member <laughs> i'm an alternate i you know, I, I really feel if I were a voting member that I'd, I'd be a bit challenged because we were hit with an awful lot over the last hour. Um, I guess I just wanted to say that. That's my two cents. It's, I, 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 it would be a difficult decision for me um, yeah, to vote for it they, just based on the fact that we were hit with a lot tonight, a lot of discovery, in the, as I understand that the process is, is supposed to avoid a lot of discovery at the last minute um, because it does put the board in the challenging position um, to make a finding of fact. To reiterate that, Joe, and thank you for making that comment. I appreciate that. And, and uh, um, uh, sorry we couldn't make you make a dif difficult decision and force you to vote tonight. So you get to have your out. Um, I think the other reason why we have that um, uh, we, we put that requirement forward and that requirement exists within our, the regulations um, to have materials available for review. It's not just for us, it is for public review. And we heard from a member of the public tonight that specifically stated, you know, they found out through the normal course of how we notify neighbors and abutters, but what they would have had access to or what they had access to when they got informed was a very thin file and a file that didn't, probably didn't have enough information for things like the underground um, uh, burial of the electric um, uh, uh, wires, things like the thoughts on other um, abutters who had been um, uh, uh, um, consulted um, that would have potentially brought other people to the table or potentially would have allowed for a more substantive um, uh, 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 concurrence or, or, or disagreement by, by an abutter. So the public is not, is the other major and most important constituency that is, um, that is uh, addressed by the requirement to have fulsome disclosure and fulsome application packages. Um, so um, yeah, it's unfortunate. It will make this a little bit quite um, difficult, but uh, I think we've agreed that we've got enough, unless there is a motion again to defer this. I think we heard earlier that we felt that there was enough, so I did not hear a motion earlier. So with that in mind, um, we're going to go through the findings of fact. Um, we're going to go the other direction and put Joe on the hot seat for number one, because we can. Joe, would you kind of uh, summarize um, finding number one, and then we could have a discussion. Just shuffle some papers here. <laughs> uh, so number one. The need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood. So the applicant answered the, the proposed house is 28 feet wide, a foot narrower than the existing home. Um, falls within the size permitted for the Higgins zone. Um, the property is unique as many of the properties in that neighborhood are being narrow. 
um, with homes close to each other. And as the applicant said, um, the general conditions in the neighborhood are, are, are very similar across the property. As we heard, there are other homes in the area, um, all on the right side of the property um, line. Uh, so as the applicant mentioned, trying to keep the home in, situated in a way where it would be consistent with the others around it. Um, so I, 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 I do find that that condition is met. Okay. I'm going to give Shelly the first one. I was just going to, sorry, I'm sorry, David. Um, I, this one always gets me because the, due to the unique circumstances of the property, I mean, I'm having a hard time with this, and I'd love somebody to convince me otherwise, but there seems like there was a couple different options, and one of the major reasons they're not doing the conformity is for a neighbor's view, which I commend, but we, like we said, we can't really take that into you know, consideration technically when we're looking at this. So the unique circumstance of the property, it just, it's big enough to have two structures on it. It's not small. Uh, I just don't know. I, someone please convince me otherwise, because I'm a no right now. Okay. Uh, we're going to go David next, and we'll hit you up. All right, Kirk, we'll see. Okay. Um, well, yes, uh, earlier when Walter was at the stand, I asked him a question which directly impacts this question. Uh, and uh, that is, you know, what's unique about this property? And quite honestly, there's nothing unique about it in the neighborhood except for one thing, you know, which he pointed out very well. And that is the condition of the sewer line. Shoreline? The sh sewer. S sewer. -E sewer. Sorry. Yeah, I can't speak sometimes, so <laughs> forgive me for that. But yeah, that's what makes it unique, mm -hmm. all right? It's, so that's something that's a pre-existing condition that's going to impact trying to build a structure that complies with setback conditions. Okay. So I know that's a very technical minor mm -hmm. point because it's just to look at the property, it's no different. It may actually be bigger than or, or you know, than, than the other properties around it. And other properties around it, have been, as has been pointed out, you know, by a few people, are in less compliance with setbacks. But again, there was no zoning back when all these homes were built. So that's, that was not intentional. It's just the way things happened back then. Yeah. So my, i just like to re reiterate, yes, there is something unique about this, this property, and that's that sewer line. And that's a big cost. Yeah. If, if the project were to go through in a way that they would have to come fully comply with the setback requirements, it would add considerable costs because of that sewer line. So the way I see this is it is unique. Proceed. <laughs> I agree it's unique. I think that um, not only the existing infrastructure, which has been there 100 years now, uh, there is also the ledge that runs through that property, which is a, a unique um, situation at, um, at, at that. Um, and there was one more thing I wanted to say. Maybe I'll remember it. But anyway, I do, I do view this as a unique situation. I am coming around on that. But with the answer that was submitted, no. It's not. There's, it's not unique, just so you guys know for future reference. Yeah. Yeah, may I comment further on, on Sure. Shelley? Okay. <laughs> so, yes, I, I would agree, Shelley, that the, when Mr. Sh when Mr. Uh, Williams read from his submission, it did not mention anything about it being unique, which is why I questioned him as to the uniqueness of the sewer line on the property, yep. in which he confirmed that, yes, that makes it unique. Yep. All right, so it wasn't part of his initial answer mm -hmm. on paper that was submitted, but in his testimony tonight, he did clarify it. <clears throat> so. I'm so sorry, Peter. I did remember my next comment. Yes. Um, it's age, what can I say? 
Um, so I do feel that it's important to take into consideration the impact on the abutter because it affects that property economically if they lose their sight line. So I like the idea that they're trying to preserve the character of the neighborhood. And that I comes like up later. We're dealing with unique Sorry. Here. Okay. <laughs> That's not number one. That comes later. Um, <laughs> Richard, do you want to say anything? Okay. Um, I would reiterate I, the, the, the way that I think we read this one, and, and um, it's two things. Number one, the, 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 the ledge underneath the properties in Higgins Beach are all create a mishmash of things. We've seen Higgins Beach properties with an ability to dig a new foundation, and we've seen Higgins Beach properties that basically you can't do anything because you're hitting a rock the second you, you scrape the surface. Um, so this is it, unique for that reason. It's also unique because of, the, as, as you said, that the, the, probably the resulting placement of where those pipes went 100 years ago. Um, again, I found it interesting that we only found out about that with five minutes left in the applicant's um, verbal remarks um, and nowhere to be found in their consultant's um, uh, written submission. But we finally found out about it, and I think, I think we have some information now. So um, with that in mind, I'm going to call the roll. I'll ask you to call the roll on all these, Doreen, because this might be a contentious one. So could you call the roll for this? Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? Aye. David Bork? Yes. Peter Freilinger? Aye. And Richard Silkman? Yes. OK, uh, number two, Richard. <coughs> Well, I don't want to steal your thunder. This was the one that you oh, really yeah. wanted it's, to go for, so actually, why, don't, yeah, why can, don't you take number two? Can we defer that one? Yeah, well, she I'm was all set to go. Yeah, go so. for it. <clears throat> the granting of a variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties. I believe that there current design has taken all of those issues into account and um, they've, uh, they do not want to affect the abutter negatively and the design is in keeping with the neighborhood. Any comments? Okay, we'll, we'll call the roll then, Doreen. Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevens? Aye. David Bort? Yes. Aye. And yes. Okay, Richard, now you can take number three. <clears throat> the practical difficulty is not the result of action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. Um, having had the discussion about number one, <clears throat> the practical difficulty is a combination of ledge and a 100-year sewer line, so it's entirely... It's impossible for it to be the result of actions taken by the current applicant um, or really uh, even some recent owners. So I think they've met this criteria. Any further discussion on that one? Uh, the sewer came in in the 70s. Just to, just to be clear, it's prior to the adoption of the zoning ordinance in 91. So it would be the same thing. So. Um, in that, uh, so. Um, no further discussion, though. And, and by the way, we are done, except on that one. Yep, can't, can't, uh, the public can't comment further. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> um, so uh, if we can call the roll. Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? Aye. David Bork? Yes. Peter Feilinger? Yes. And Richard Silkman? Yes. I think I'm going to get the phone to you, David, number four. Oh, thank you. This is another one. <laughs> no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except the variance. That is not true. However, when you take into consideration the problems that it would create, you know, by meeting the setback requirement, uh, I think this is the only practical uh, solution. Uh, and uh, you know, it it would create a significant. Um, hardship uh, to the applicant to try to do it in a way that would comply with the setback requirements. Uh, and therefore, I just don't think that uh, that is feasible at all, and that uh, this is probably the most practical way to, to present a very attractive home 
which would uh, really uh, improve the character and fit in with the character of this neighborhood for, as, as is required by the Higgins Beach uh, uh, requirements. Michelle? So I have another problem with this one. No other feasible alternative is available. I, it doesn't say anything about practical. It's feasible, which I guess you could argue maybe are similar, but the owner already came up and said that they could renovate. So that's feasible to me. So there is a feasible, a feasible alternative to what they're proposing, in addition to the other things that were maybe not practical, but still feasible. I don't know. Joe, or question for Brian. Brian, if, if they were to pursue the alternative that was discussed earlier, changing the size, do they still find themselves in the position where a second floor or a two and a half story, a bump out would require them to come and ask for relief? If they were to reduce the, the width to 24, is that what you're talking about? Right. right. They've got a nonconformance on the north side of the property. If they were to increase the height of the house within that nonconformance, they're back in front of us, aren't they? It wouldn't be no. nonconforming if by reducing it to 24 feet they met the 8-foot setback. That's what they're alleging, is that they'd have to reduce it down to 24 feet to meet an eight foot setback, which is On. the required setback. They wouldn't have to come for a variance. You're talking about the height though. I'm talking about the it height on the north redesign, side. likely, which- Because but, the house would still- But if it's in a conforming only, footprint, it then can, it's fine. Yeah. it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, but not with Higgins. <laughs> I'm not sure I really understand right? the question. Just, yeah. 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 <laughs> we've, we've had three story buildings. That yeah. The only thing that wouldn't meet it would be the, the stair tower dormer mm -hmm. that Mr. Wilson referred to earlier. Which, which I tried to beat out of him with every ounce of my being. And, and I would, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say anymore. That's what you're talking about, right, Joe? That's what I'm, yeah. Yes, that's what that, I'm referring that to. That part requires a 12-foot setback because a, a dormer requires 12 feet from the, the property line to the face. And that's why I tried to get him to, to change his stripes, but he won't. Hmm. So a question for Brian? Uh, and then... A, Another comment, Brian. Is that technically a dormer? I call it a dormer. And why? Hmm? Why? Technically. Because, because technically it, it's a piece of the roof that, that pops up yeah. that is not a, in a consistent plane okay. with the rest of the it roof. It changes the dimensions of the roof? Yeah. Well, it doesn't change the dimensions of the roof. Mm -hmm. It changes it, the, the surface of the roof. It quacks the like a dormer, so it is a dormer. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Okay. Uh, and also, I'd like to uh, just address feasible alternatives. I want to go back to that issue. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, as was pointed out, the applicant wouldn't even need, it would not even need to be here tonight were it not for two things. Okay. First, renovation. Second is to build it to the 24 by 38 or whatever, you know. You know, that would not require a variance. They could do that without even coming here tonight. So, you know, I, I would suggest that we kind of, you know, look, look at this in, a, along with the other uh, things that have to be satisfied as far as practical difficulty, uh, because that's re it really all ties into this. So I don't know how we can really look at this independent of the others. I, it's just, that's, it, it's very complex. So, uh, not sure I agree with that, but um, my comment on this one would be basically be I don't believe the applicant has explored anywhere near um, a, 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 a meaningful range of alternatives. Um, and one of the alternatives, which is renovation, they've addressed said, yeah, we could do that. Um, and um, and. So again, no other feasible alternative. Um, feasible doesn't say economic maximizing. Feasible doesn't say it will give us the most valuable piece of property when we're done with this. 
Feasible doesn't say the absolute lowest cost option. Feasible is feasible. And we haven't seen a range of feasible alternatives explored. And the ones that we have had proposed come back with a, yeah, that could probably work. So to me, this one's pretty clearly not met. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I, mean, I disagree 100% with that. <laughs> cool. We have never had an applicant in front of us where there wasn't a feasible alternative using that broad definition of feasible alternative. The issue here, as David pointed out, is the context of the applicants that we're talking about. <clears throat> Every proposal that we have seen we could identify a feasible way of reducing the size of the house and letting them live in a smaller house. We could, we could create a feasible alternative that would have cost twice the value or twice the cost by renovating, taking up the entire foundation and rebuilding it. I mean, what we have here is that the two feasible alternatives in quotation marks that David mentioned, the renovation they have demonstrated will cost in excess of $100,000 on the foundation alone, plus whatever renovating costs that they would incur. There's no estimate, but once you reach 100,000 on a project like that, it's no longer feasible by most people's notion of what feasible is. The second alternative that they presented to us or that has been des described as lengthening the house and narrowing it. Well, when you do that, there are consequences. The consequences are the entire design of the house has to change, number one, and number two, we block the view shed of the neighbor behind them or to the north of them. I mean, that, that violates criteria number two. So now we're stuck in this never, never land. Do we, how do we value that alternative against criteria number two? And it strikes me that criteria number two has to stand on its own. They've created a project that doesn't create any problems for the neighbor. And the alternative of a 24 by 38 house is just not feasible given criteria number two. How much would criteria number two cost? You can't solve the criteria number two unless you make a square in the middle of the house so that people can see through it to preserve the view shed. Well, my point is, is we don't have any evidence whatsoever that any cost-benefit analysis was done You for can't that. do a cost-benefit analysis. Sure you can. You can engage the neighbor and have the neighbor come here and represent as a member of the public, as other members of the public can do, saying, I don't like this redesign because of it's blocking my view. Or they can say, nope, this works fine. But you're not, you're not going to get, I mean, if we go down that path, every time one of us identifies a feasible alternative that they could have pursued, we are going to have to go back to all of the neighbors and ask them whether or not this feasible alternative is acceptable to you. Richard, we haven't identified the feasible alternatives. They have. They, they brought to us the say. idea that these were possible alternatives. No, in terms of our questioning of them, they did not explore those alternatives as part of their applicant. They would never have had a cause to do it. They have a design. They're asking us to evaluate the design. That's our job. Our job isn't to develop, well, all of the scope of possible alternatives that they could have looked at. If we go down that path, we are never going to grant a variance on this committee because there is always going to be some alternative that could have been pursued. And then we're going to have to start the whole public comment period over again, the whole application period over again to get the comments from the people. Pra practical a, variances are not supposed to be easy, Richard. But they are supposed to happen. They're, no, they're, they're not supposed to happen. No, that's, that's a false statement. If they weren't supposed to happen, we wouldn't have them. They're, they are supposed to happen when there's a practical they're difficulty. Supposed to be, they're, it's supposed to be possible to get them. That's what to I'm saying. To say it's supposed to happen is an absurd read of the no, variance process. A, but they have to occur. Not every instance, but if, they, if it was impossible to get a variance, then there would be no need for us. If they're I, hard I, to get, that's why there's the practical difficulty. And we've laid out the scope of the practical difficulty here. Now, if you don't believe that that's a practical difficulty, then you'll vote against it. But yeah, I from my perspective, $100,000 under one option and blocking the view shed under another option and having some other consequences under a third option that somebody may consider or a fourth option or a fifth option, that's just a rabbit hole that I'm not going down. We have in front of us an applicant who's provided us an application and we have to evaluate that application. 
I would agree. We also have to go, I, I would say we also have to hang our hats on common sense interpretation of rules like feasible alternative. But I think we've reached a point where we can then um, have, a, have a roll call on this yes. one anyway. So. Hold on. Oh, I'd like to add. Damn it. <laughs> so, feasible. All right, I'd just like to uh, explore that a little bit uh, and just kind of add on to what Richard said. Yes, the applicant testified tonight that the proposed 24 by 38 would c cause them extreme cost because of the shoreline problem. So that alone rules that out as feasible. No, the 24 by 38 would not have no. led to that. Wait a minute. Yes, it does. No, they, they, it's on the same footprint. They extend backwards, and they, have, they would build the foundation off the, sh the, um, the ledge, it's but they would not good. at that point need to move the, the sewer lines. The sewer lines would continue to run, in, uh, run under the driveway and hook, hook up the, as they, presumably where they have or as they have. So yeah. that's how it was represented as I heard it. Yeah, if the, if the, 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 24 by, the 24 by 38 version is a negative impact on the neighbor. That's what they're, they're raising. Okay, well, I understand the impact on neighbors, and to me, that's, a, that's not a, a point at all. Uh, so but, it's a feasible alternative, is what you well, just admitted well, to. No, but, you know, I, maybe I misunderstood the presentation that was given regarding uh, the extra cost that would be required in order to comply with a setback. Okay. Yeah. No. Which, the, 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 which would uh, be to to move the the house over, uh, and that triggers the need to redo the entire sewer system and driveway. No, that would have that located a twenty eight foot house. No, the renovate doesn't, renovation doesn't require that. No, 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 no. This is the 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 the, the, the meeting the setback is they take their their new twenty eight foot with design, move it over so that it meets the four foot setback. Now it's in the driveway. And the driveway has to be dug up, and they have to relocate the sewer lines. And that requires blasting, or not necessarily blasting the shale, but probably blasting into the shale. That's what I heard. Correct. So it's, it's taking the 28-foot design and moving it south four feet. Not taking the, what, we've, what, it is the, what I've described as a feasible alternative, the 24-foot house, keeping it with the existing foundation lines and just punching the back. And, and, and locating foundation on shale in the back. Let's see if I understand this correctly. Would putting a 24 by 38 move the house further away from the driveway? No, we keep the same driveway. Um, uh, it's, uh, the, the, okay. They would abut the, the driveway at the same point. All right, so it's a non-issue. Yeah, that's right. Okay, all right. Mr. Chair, I just want to offer, just for the board, I just Googled the definition of feasible. I was afraid you would do that. that. Waiting for that. <laughs> it says you can do it without too much difficulty. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Maybe that just gives us a little context to that, that thing. I just offered that up. Thank you. So, okay. So, um, anything else? Okay. Okay. Um, shall we call the roll? Got it. Thank you. Uh, Doreen, if you would. Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? No. David Bort? Yes. Peter Freilinger? No. And Richard Silverman? Yes. Okay, that goes 3-2. Um, the granting of variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. I think it's my turn. Um, I don't see anything that has been presented in this that would say no to this. Um, the First off, the existing property is in conformance, but the design that they're choosing, the relative setbacks they're choosing, the, all, all the rest, um, very much within what we see on a month-to-month -month basis from Higgins Beach. This is nothing out of the ordinary for that. So I would say five would be a yes. Any comments on that one? Doreen, if you would. Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? Yes. David Bork? Yes. Peter Feilinger? Yes. And Richard Silkman? Yes. Okay. Um, Joe, we'll give you another easy one. Granny of variance will not have <laughs> on, the, on the natural environment. Uh, number six, granting of a variance will not reasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. No, it will not. I actually appreciated the applicant's um, terse reply. Um, any uh, comment on that one? Didn't think so. Uh, we'll call the roll. 
during. Well, before you do that, I, I'm trying to I'm trying to craft findings of fact, and no is not a good. <laughs> The, can we can we expand so on that? Just I, a little I, bit? I can expand on that. So the the proposed uh, the the proposed change to the property, um, the the applicant is going to build a, a a new new design on a, approximately the same footprint as the existing home. Uh, same is true of the carriage house out behind. Um, so I'll, given that and that we have a reputable contractor who's going to be involved in the project and would be familiar with all of the EPA requirements and runoff DEP requirements, uh, I'm, I have no concern that there's going to be any environmental impact. You'll shorten that one up, right, Brian? I will add that naturally the natural environment is going to look nicer because they're going to bury their lines. There you go. True. Let's see. Okay. I do have something good to say, guys. There you go. Call the roll, please. Kill all Christine the Snow. Kill all the and stuff. Christine. Aye. Michelle Stevenson. Aye. David Book. Yes. Peter Feininger. Aye. And Richard Silkman. Yes. And again, we'll leave this one just to be confirmed by staff. Um, the property is not located whole or in part within the shoreline area or the flood hazard zone. Confirmed. Gotcha. We will accept that as read. And then finally, number eight, which I've got to get my language for. The strict applications of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and would also result in significant economic injury to the applicant. Um, I don't know who, uh, who wants to take this one. No, I just read the what it is. So. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but, but, but thank you. I, I, I will. I actually, um, I can start on that one. If you want. Go for it, Richard. Thank you very much. <clears throat> what, the, what the owner wishes to do is to build a house that is conforming with the character code for Higgins Beach. And that allows for a 28 foot wide house. It allows for other dimensions of the property. They want to build that house that's allowable to be built. However, because of the nature of the property and because of the issues associated with the ledge and the setback requirements, they can't build that property on the exist, they can't build that house on the existing piece of property <clears throat> without either incurring a significant economic injury in the form of very excessive higher costs to conform to or to build um, in conformance with the zoning ordinances or with a variance, which would relieve them of that economic injury. So given that, if they want to build the property, which they otherwise would be allowed to do it, they can't do it unless they incur significant injury. And therefore, I think that the criteria is met. I think you're arguing a different point on this one, Richard. Um, so this one would be, if they were, if the property were say 15 feet more narrow, then the strict adoption of the um, of the dimensional standards of the ordinance would create a house that would be like 13 feet wide, and that would be um, uh, preclude the use of the property and would result in significant economic injury. In this case, a strict application of the setbacks allows them to have a 24 or even a 28 foot house. Um, it's just that. So, so this is not so much about um, the, the, the house's design. It's, this is about if the property itself had dimensional standards that, could, that had a, f a buildable footprint that effectively precluded an economically viable home, we would find on this one. On, on this one, eight, I think the answer is this is not applicable because the applicant is able to build. Therefore, yes, um, the... Uh, or the, the answer is no, but it, what it means is we vote no, and that means we should allow this variance to go forward. Does that make sense? Yeah, because yeah, think about it. Because if, if the strict application of the um, ordinance would both preclude a use of the property, which is permitted, which strict application would not preclude it and would also result in significant economic injury to the applicant. I don't think the building footprint issues are the cause here. 
So in other words, I kind of go, and, 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 and maybe now I'm looking at the Brian, I kind of go on this one as N-A. This somehow does, doesn't fit the terms of this variance request. Well, I'm I think, trying to make it fit, but Brian, yeah. you've got some <laughs> yeah. ideas here. Well, I think, I thought where you were going with this, and, and I, I would kind of agree is, I guess the first thing is, did you determine, you're trying to determine is there a practical difficulty based on the definition? Mm -hmm. That's your job tonight. So it says both preclude a use that would otherwise be permitted in the zone and would, uh, would cause significant economic injury to the applicant. So okay. they, could, they could fail on the first count and pass on the second count. Got it. Okay, I think that's where that's I'm where going I to. That's where I thought you yeah. were going. So, in other words, Richard, the, it's not the footprint issue. There is significant economic injury, and that's why I think this one would be the yes. Does that make sense? It, it, it can't be, no, be non-applicable. <laughs> yeah, got it. Okay. No, I see what you're, I see what you're well, saying. I kind of see what you're saying. It's, it is applicable, but we've already discussed Part B in, the, in number two. Well. So, like, we've already... We established that, so well, and that, you're really establishing the first part of it. Well, number two and number three are abutting properties for number two and practical, um, or sorry, number four. A feasible alternative would be number four. This one is significant economic injury. Um, and on this one, I think significant economic injury, um, meeting the strict terms of the of the, of, of, of the footprint, which is essentially moving the house, tearing up the, the driveway, and blowing through the shale, is a significant injury. Um, so I think this beats on B. Um, whereas in A, there are other alternatives, but if they don't use those alternatives and just meet the, 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 um, the, the setback rules, they'd have to blow stuff up and I keep going about that, but I just have that the image in my mind. They'd have to blow up shale, and it'd cost a lot of money. So, so yeah. Um, okay, we can call the roll. I think. I'm seeing a lot of head notes. Christine So. Aye. Michelle Stevenson. Aye. David Bort. Yes. Peter Freilinger. Yes. Yes. Okay. I would also just like to add: we are not lawyers, and we are a group of volunteers to interpret this, and Brian Longstaff is our advisor, so thank you for bearing with us. Sometimes we have to talk it out, um, but sorry, Chair. No, Go right, and, and, and you're right. We are a citizen volunteer body tasked with a quasi-judicial function, which is to interpret the laws and the ordinances as given, but that's what, our, that's what the state of Maine, which encourages citizenship democracy, um, has determined is the best way to get to the best outcomes, which I, get, I know, I'm getting there. Michelle, never apologize for not being a lawyer. <laughs> there there are way too many board, of them. But he as has it a cold. <laughs> <laughs> okay, with that in mind, um, do I have a motion to approve the appeal? So moved. David, uh, I'll take David first, I'll take Richards in second. Um, uh, any discussion, or we'll go for the vote? Doreen. Christine Snow? Aye. Michelle Stevenson? Aye. David Bork? Yes. No. And Richard Silver. Yes. That's a duck. Did you get that? Okay. So that's four to one. That's four to one. The motion passes. The appeal is granted. Thank you very much. Um, okay. Uh, and um, please, uh, uh, Richard, especially, you've done some great work in my neighborhood. You've done some great work in my neighborhood. Yeah, next, next time, just, yeah, a lot more, please. I really appreciate can I see them? Yeah. Now? I want to see what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, let's see them in five. Three hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's see. Them. We'll see them in three minutes. We have to adjourn the meeting first. Thank you very much. Unless there are further comments, do I have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Michelle. And uh, Joe gets a second. All in favor? Uh, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Okay, now let's see the pictures.